Let's get it. Hi, we're back with another Sister Wives review. I wanted to give my perspective on Cody and Robin's relationship and maybe give a new alternative uh, reality to what's actually going on in their relationship. Just a different perspective. Because we spend a lot of time looking at Robin's relationship with Cody as uh, maybe more of a sexual depravity, like, oh, she's doing freaky stuff to him. That's why he's so bent and so whipped on trying to please her. Or we take the other term or other usage of it by saying that uh, she done threw it on him. And now all of a sudden she's able to manipulate him and get the things that she wants from him. I don't necessarily want to go against those ideals, but I want to add a little more tread to them as we roll down the road. Now, as always, if you guys are enjoying my content, I would ask that you give me the thumbs up. Let a brother know that you like what I'm doing. Also, if you're not yet subscribed, it's easy to do. It might not be a big click to you, but for me, it's a huge click. So go ahead, give me that HBO special, which stands for Help a Brother Out Special by clicking that subscribe button, ringing the bell for notifications, and you will be notified when I upload content just like this, whether it's Sister Wives, 90 Day, whatever, or when I go live. All right, holla at your boy now. Let's get it. Now, as I mentioned, when you start thinking about Cody's relationship with Robin, a lot of times it breaks down just down to the physical portion of it. Oh, she done did some wild stuff to him. She's a freak in the sheets, lady in the streets. Oh, she got all this. And that's why he does what he does. It got so bad that during the tell-all, he said a few reprehensible things about the other ladies, trying to diminish those relationships. And I want to give a perspective of maybe why he's doing that. Let's take a look at one of the things that I thought was probably one of the more reprehensible things he said, maybe even for the entire series. And this is, you know, <laughs> for a guy that is a habitual rake stepper, this is, like, <laughs> this is the, the granddaddy rake of them all. So he not only stepped on the rake, but he fell in the pool. <laughs> so let's take a look real quick and remind ourselves what Cody said and with regard to Janelle and how he tried to diminish that relationship. And we'll take it from there. When you say your humanity, you mean your vulnerability? Right, That right. you just felt that you were there to be, what, a physical yes, exactly. boy toy? I, I, like some pool boy. So you just felt like a resource? You just I felt, felt like, like a good piece looking of meat. Like in what like, way? I, you have to explain what that means because I don't know much about your relationship with Janelle. Yeah. Did you just have a great, no, did no. you guys just have great sex? Mm. Mm, yeah, I love when, <laughs> and for those who think that Suki didn't do a good job, I think Suki actually did a better job in this particular tell-all, in this instance, than she has in the history of the time that she's been doing the tell-all. Because she has been giving Cody some pushback. She's been making him feel a little more uncomfortable, a little more in the seat. But, you know, per Cody's, I'm pretty sure the rules and stipulations he has towards the tell-all and the questions that he can be had, asked and how hard she can push them, I'm pretty sure that she'd probably try to push him as hard as she could. Now, with that being said, if you listen to what Cody was talking about, what he was saying was, is that Janelle basically wants to use me for a uh, relation. She wants to bring get me over there and try to take advantage of me and my sweet innocence and i don't necessarily want to participate in that there's two things that we have to focus on when it comes to this particular issue in this frame and context the first is is that when he talks about janelle using him physically if you really break down the relationship as it was described on the show there are very few things that Janelle actually could use Cody for because Cody wasn't around. She couldn't use him to take care of her kids. She couldn't use him when it came time for her to figure out where she was going to stay or how she was going to manage her finances. Technically, she's the one who does and manages the finances of the family. So she couldn't rely on Cody for that, for those resources. So the emotional support, Cody's not around for the... Uh, 
the helping to discipline the kids. Cody's not around. So Cody's not around for a lot of things. But what Cody could be around for is the physical needs that Janelle may have. So it may feel like to Cody that he's being used physically by Janelle because Janelle doesn't require him for a lot of the other things that are happening in her life. So from that respect, it may feel that way. And it's not Janelle's fault that the situation is that way. It's just how Cody has laid his relationship out with her. And so therefore, you know, it just feels like a very physical relationship. The The subsection of that is, is that Cody has made the complaint that Janelle wants to use me in his physical way. And that's how it's always been. And this is the way we treat each other. Janelle was trying to take the opportunity to redefine the relationship. So if it was an issue where you thought she was just kind of using you for the hit it and quit it, the pump and dumps, the the smash it and dash it, like if you thought it was all that, then you could have easily said during a time of renegotiating when you're getting to relearn each other and get to know each other and coming to a new agreement, you could have made that as part of your agreement in your marriage if you were interested in that. Now, the next part of this is, is that when you think about the relationship between Janelle and Cody and how he uh, is trying to downplay that relationship and make it seem like it wasn't that important, this may all be a play towards Robin and his insecurity in that relationship. Because... When he gets cornered, and again, this is to Suki's credit, when he gets cornered about, oh, you guys just had great, you know, great fun times in the boudoir. You got, you know, she was backflipping on you. She was spinning on the fans. She was diving off the dresses. She was coming in with the costumes. She had the whips, the chains, and all all the pains. She she was going all out. Janelle took no shorts. She's a lady in the streets and a freak in the sheets. Janelle was doing her thing. And Cody had to deny that, oh, no, 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 I don't want to talk about it, even though I brought it up to try to make her feel bad. And that was one of the things that he was trying to do. But if we watch how Suki, and again, I think Suki Suki did a better job in this tell-all than she ever did in any of the others. If you watch how she presses him and she does the follow-up question, well, what do you mean by that? We just can't leave that sit there that she was using you for your body. We have to explore that. And Cody immediately backs off of it. And there's a very important reason as to why. And I'm not going to drag it out long, but I just want to lay the foundation. So go for the ride with me. Let's take a look. No, no. Did you guys just have great sex? Mm. <laughs> I'm going to ask that. No, I'm, because I'm if not, you're saying I was I, just a I piece of meat. I want to answer that question. That's not what it is. Th- th- these are loving relationships. Yeah. Sex is part of it. But that's not That's mm-hmm. not a focus. But, she, she has to be in the family. Whatever For what reasons? She thought was in this, but, but it was. Cause she loved you. No, she was attracted to me. I know she wasn't in love with me. So mm, I don't. Oh, I don't want to tell. I don't want to tell because what she was doing to me. Oh, baby, <laughs> she was tearing me to pieces. I was being used. <laughs> but the whole thing is, is that if you listen to what he said, I don't want to talk about it. Oh, I don't want to mention it. Oh, we went to a place I'm not comfortable with going. This is where you were going the whole time because you were trying to diminish Janelle by saying that she was less than and she was using you. And somehow she's depraved because she has physical needs because she's a healthy woman and she wants to have those needs met. All of a sudden, she, we should look bad on Janelle because what would what would be the purpose of that? Will be the purpose of that. He's treating Janelle as though she's coming in and she's the other woman and she's messing up his relationship. She's coming in messing up his marriage. She's interfering with his marriage to Robin. That's how he's treating her, and that's that was the whole purpose and the whole point of him saying that she's using me physically. Is it like she's the other around the way girl and I got my wife and my family. I want to be dedicated to my family and be with my family. And she's trying to prevent that. Now, one of the things that I I, I keep kind of dancing around with, but I want to press is the idea that Cody and Robin's relationship is nowhere near as secure as he pretends it to be or purports it to be or as We have, even the sister wives have said on the tell-all or during the show, oh, Robin and Cody, they're soulmates. I've always kind of felt that Robin wasn't as attracted to Cody 
as much as Cody is attracted to Robin. Cody is enamored with Robin. When he sat there and he talked about uh, all the sacrifices that he was making and and how he was uh, traveling and, and the things he would do when they first met, these are things that are in place because he was hyper attracted to Robin. Now, some people will say, James, well, why was he attracted to Robin? What does that mean? Maybe she was doing some wild stuff to him. But I want you to put it in context of this. Physically, sexually, how you look, availability, experience, so on and so forth. That's a way for you to get somebody's attention. That's a way for you to get a man or get a woman. Like you can get somebody with some good, you know, if you got that good, mm -mm, you can get somebody. But that's not going to ever help you keep that person. That's not going to keep them coming back. Because you you flip it, you know, smack it up, flip it, rub it down the right way. That might, you know, you're a good distraction. You're a good experience. But that's not going to keep or save a relationship. It may hold off a breakup. It may hold that person for a little bit, but it's not going to, it's not, a, it's a, it's a bandaid on a, on a bullet wound because when push comes down to shove, it's not healing anything and it's not making anything better. It's not, it's not the glue that's going to keep that person stuck and returning and stuck and, and never being able to get away. Cody is beyond just a, a physical attraction, just beyond the lust aspect. Now, I a lot of times dismissed it to, oh, well, maybe Cody has this thing where he gets the mistress effect or the vacation effect. I can go to Robin's house. I don't have to deal with any of the problems. I go to uh, Janelle's house. Oh, she's trying to, you know, <laughs> she's trying to get it in. <laughs> I go over or she wants to talk to me about money. And how we're spending the finances and how I'm just wasting money and blowing money and I'm buying uh, convertible luxury cars and I got a whole family and I don't need a sports car and I'm wasting money. I have three, four, because Cody has three, four luxury, those uh, Lexus convertible cars. And I, I think it was like two Lexuses and maybe another convertible car that he had. And... He, so he's wasting all this money on all these cars and he's buying all the kids cars, the wives cars, everybody got cars and then she don't have a place to stay. Mary don't have a house that she owns with the family. She has Lizzie's in that she owns by herself and separate, but she doesn't have a family within the house within the family. Christine, she was able to finagle herself a house within the family, but money is being wasted. So you have that when you go over to Janelle's house. Then you go over to Christine's house. Christine wants you to spend time with her kids and how you're not spending time at her house and you're not spending time with the family and you're not making her feel like she's part of the family. You go over to Mary's house, all of a sudden you got to let, you know, with Mary and the way their relationship was, especially towards the uh, end when Robin came in, I'll say the end when Robin came in, which is, I guess, accurate. But when Robin came in, all of a sudden she's desperate for affection. She's desperate for attention. And he could go over to Robin's house and he has that clean, you know, I'm going to service your needs type mentality. He gets to be the king of that castle. He gets to save her. She's not questioning him. She's not uh, saying things to him to make him feel bad about himself like he's not doing enough. With the other women, because he wasn't doing enough, they were bringing up the fact he wasn't doing enough and he had to deal with that. So... When he deals with Robin, it's a vacation. It's a mistress. It's a mistress uh, feeling. It's the mistress fantasy, because you don't have. That's the place of no problems. But here's the thing, and here's a slight twist that I want to put on it, because this is all stuff we already understand. If you think about it, I'd always assume that Robin wanted to keep herself separate from the family. Because she wanted to be the single wife. She wanted to be the, the only wife. She wanted to be a monogamous. Now, I do think that there is some, uh, there's some evidence to that. But I also now think that Cody may very well have wanted her to stay separate. Because if you think about it, if you got a woman on do right and she don't act right, and then her friends are on do wrong, <laughs> are wrong all the time, right? 
you try to keep them separated. You got one kid that's doing really well in school and looks like he has a future, and you got the other three kids out committing crimes and sticking people up. You don't want that good kid hanging out with those three bad ones. In Cody's fragile state, he may not want his new wife or new girlfriend in Robin hanging out with the three women who are holding him accountable, telling him that he has responsibilities that he has to live up to. I don't want, I, I like going to Robin's house, the place of no problems. I don't want her moving into Janelle's half of the Lehigh house, either the top floor or bottom floor with her kids. And then she starts to associate with these other women. Next thing you know, I have four women with the same type of problem. So maybe it was Cody who had insisted that they stay apart. I also take this from the perspective of this. If you listen to the uh, whole COVID rules, and there was a point where uh, I think during my live and even before that, I had thought about it and I was actually going to put it in the live. But somebody ca called me because those guys, man, in that chat box, they are on top of it. They're on top of it, Jack. It's, it's crazy. But somebody has said, you know, the wife is the head and the, uh, the husband is the head and the wife is the neck. And that's that the wife can kind of direct the head the way she wants it to go. And that's a form of manipulation. Now, if you talk about Cody and Robin, if Cody is looking at Robin and he sees her as a prize, why does he see her as a prize? Because the other three women are have accepted the fact that they want Cody and they love him and they're open to him. And they've, they basically reveal themselves that I want to be with you. Whereas Robin comes in with the hesitation, you know, even some of the things she mentions. Oh, you know, I had a bunch of suitors who were trying to get with this. I had a bunch of guys who were trying to date me and I had to pick which one I wanted. And I chose Cody in this family. Even Cody brags about that. Now, what does that tell me? With the other three women, he feels like he has them. With Robin, he's constantly feeling like he has to pursue her. I don't think that he feels secure with having Robin. I think with the OG3, and sometimes you see this in like baby daddy, baby mama situations, the person will leave and they think they can always come back and knock off the baby daddy, baby mama anytime they want because they that's somewhere they've been and they feel like that's always available to them. Like, like, same, same. I think for Cody, he thinks that those OG3 ladies is all, are, all, are always going to be available to him. Whereas Robin, he feels like he constantly has to prove himself and constantly has to develop and constantly have to establish that she's the one he wants and that he's doing everything that she wants of him. In an ironic state, when you talk about like the goals, like where uh, Mary, Christine, and even Janelle to a point were saying that Cody was setting up goals and things that they had to do in order for him to want to be with them. It's very possible that when you take people do, uh, people are who they are and they act the same way in all situations for the most part, because that's who they are. And you learn how to deal with these situations by things that you may be going through. So if you were bullied, you tend to bully other people. In Cody's case, he may be setting those goals for these women of behavior so he'll choose to be with them because that's what's happening with him and Robin. So when we talk about Cody being the head, the patriarch, the leader of the family, and Robin being the neck, and we'll get into, like in another video, I'll talk about like how she manipulates even as the neck. But one of the ways that she can manipulate for the purposes of this video is simply by saying, I don't think that I necessarily like that. And because Cody wants to try to impress Robin, he'll do what's necessary in order to win her over. Now, I'll, I'll say this. Let's take a look at something, and this is like early on, something that I should have picked up on. If this was a monogamous relationship and I would have took my, trying to understand polygamy had all, I'd have noticed this a while ago. 
But let's take a look at what Cody had to say when he was sitting there on a, was it a first or second episode? And he was talking about Robin and his love and passion for Robin. Let's take a look at it and then we'll talk about it in a different way than I've talked about it before. When Robin and I were new in the relationship, um, my heart, had, I was going through some real difficult times and I'm in Christine's room sobbing. I remember, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was sobbing. I didn't know what was wrong. I'm looking at her. I don't know what's wrong, but I'm like, my heart is breaking in a million pieces, all this. And Christine's like, well, you're lovesick. And the only cure is a marriage. <laughs> you know? All right. As he said, he was lovesick. Now, when I first heard that, I was like, wow, that's pretty sorry. And that's hurtful to these women who are sitting there listening to the man that they love, their husband, talk about how he wants to be with another woman. And he was, wishes he was with her while he's sitting in her house in, on her bed. Like, how crazy is that? But if you listen to what he said from the lens of this is a person that he's not sure he has. This is somebody he desperately wants, but he's not sure he's secured her yet. And he's unsure. So, yeah, he's going to sit there and cry and, and be upset because he's apart from her. And, and in Cody's mindset, maybe his presence is required. He has to stay close to her, has to stay on top of her, because if she has the opportunity, one of these other guys might swoop in there and snatch him from her, snatch her from him. So he's upset. And saying that, oh, I got to be with her. And I was so upset. Even now as he's sitting on the couch, and I, that bothered me before. But now that I'm thinking about it, as he's sitting on the couch and he's describing this scene, he's crying then. He's upset then. Why is he upset now? Because he is desperately in love with her. There's another part of that first season where they talk about this. Let's take a listen. So I'm going down to see Robin. It's a long drive, 300 miles, five hours. It's been 16 years since I've courted someone. So uh, it's a very unique experience. It's very different this time around. Now, when he did the whole, oh, I was driving 300 miles, five hours. I was like, there's no way in the world this dude ain't sleeping. <laughs> he drive, ain't nobody drive 300 miles <laughs> to hold somebody's hand and drink sip hot cocoa. Like, nobody's doing that. <laughs> like, the only way cocoa is involved is prop, there's some situations going on. Freaking the sheets. But when the whole point of me saying that is, is that I wanted to establish that this guy is going above and beyond. It's not just a, a sexual thing because, I mean, technically, he was dating her for, what, months, driving 300 miles. Like, he would take every weekend with his pregnant wife at home. He'd pack his car up, and he'd take off. After he'd come home Friday after work, he'd get in his, pack his stuff and take off with a big smile on his face. That's not somebody who's just having physical relations with somebody. That's somebody who is pursuing somebody. And I think that in Cody's case, he spent a lot of time pursuing her. Which is why when he was sitting there talking to them about uh, the whole incident with the family members getting together and his ability to be able to talk and deal with Garrison and, and uh, Gabe and the other kids. And he was talking about the family not tearing the relationship between Robin and he apart. Let's take a look at that clip real quick. Someday our family civil war may end and then that contempt you know, we can deal with it. And, and Robin and I are gonna be like this. You're not gonna separate us. They want their dad, but they don't want Robin. That's not gonna work. Robin and I are gonna be like this, and we're gonna work this out. And that's just the relationship we're gonna be in. Now, I will admit, when I first heard that, I was like, oh, that's kind of insensitive. Like, he's saying, basically, I'm choosing her over my kids. Now, <laughs> which is insane to me. Like, that's crazy as hell. But <laughs> if you take it a step further, and especially look at it from the perspective that I'm talking about now, or at least the one that I'm proposing, if Cody's saying that we're going to be together, it's not just any insistence that we're going to be together. It's speaking directly towards his insecurities because he's not sure if they're going to be together. He wants them. He wants the relationship to work. 
He's demanding and hoping that the relationship works. And he doesn't want anybody in the world to mess this relationship up because this is something he desperately wants. And by him constantly chasing after Robin, this makes her more attractive and this makes the prize more grand and great because he's investing so much time, so much energy. He is literally making sacrifices of his time and, and time with his family and his kids to try to make this relationship work as a, as a sacrifice to prove to Robin how valuable this relationship is. Like I said, even with uh with Robin being the neck and him being the head, when he looks at the neck, he doesn't want to get decapitated. You can call him Robin the guillotine because he doesn't want to get cut off. So Robin, you know, like during the COVID thing, if she makes a suggestion that, you know, Saul was kind of sick, so I don't want my kids really around the other family. Okay, guys, we're going to create a situation where the kids can't be around uh, Robin and, and we're just going to kind of do our own things. And then Robin says, well, you know, Christine and Janelle, they have that close relationship and their kids grew up together and I, they're all going to be together and I don't want my kids to feel like they left out. Okay, from now on, nobody else can meet. You all must sit in your houses separately and apart, and that way Robin feels better. Everything Cody does is so that he can appease and appeal to Robin because this is the woman that he not only wants, but this is the woman that he's pursuing. He's still pursuing her because he doesn't have her. Now, for me, the nail in the coffin to prove this point was actually filmed in season 18 in the last episode where Robin, Mary, and Cody were sitting on Coyote Pass having a conversation. Do you remember Robin's joke? Let's take a listen to refresh our memories. You never know if Cody and I are going to stay together. I mean, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen another 22 years down the road. <laughs> that was a bad joke, Cody. Sorry. Sorry. I think of a comeback. No, I'm just saying, like, here's the thing. No, this is... This <laughs> 10 years is, to, in, 12 be, years in, I wouldn't have thought either. That was a bad joke. Sorry, sweetheart. I'm sorry. I apologize. Now, Cody, that's like I said before, Cody looked like he breaking down. Cody didn't take that as a joke. And I even said it like, oh, you know, that's because Robin's already fitting to leave his ass, which I do think is maybe in the works that she's setting it up so she can have her departure story together. But she's keeping him strung and strung out because there's always a constant threat that she may leave. And he's feeling that threat. That's why I think it affected him so deeply. Because if you look at Cody, Cody didn't know what to say. He looked like he was about to break down crying. He looked like he was about to break down crying, much like he did on the couch when he was talking about being lovesick. And I think the reason why, again, is because with the OG3, he thinks that he's taking them for granted. He thinks, I already got them. I'm not worried about them. Anytime I want to go back to them, the door is always wide open. It doesn't matter what's happening, what's going on. I just go back to the OG3 and they'll take me back because I am who I am and they are who they are. However, with Robin, he doesn't think he can walk out of that situation clean. In fact, as kind of a foreshadowing of next week's episode of the tell-all, or maybe a, they'll probably do it in the fourth episode, the way the TLC does their, tra their trailers. Robin kind of implied that Cody is there messing up and sabotaging a relationship. Now, I think that that's two-phased, and we have to see it in a full context, but just the, the implication of it, I'll introduce the idea here for uh, next week, or week after next. I think it's two phase. One, I think she's setting it up so when she leaves, she can say that he was mistreating her and treating her wrong and he was doing things that made her uncomfortable. That's why she left. Please don't hate me, everybody. See, I'm a good person. So because she, again, she's always constantly doing that image rehabilitation because Robin likes to be in the spotlight and this is the way that I think she thinks she could stay in the spotlight and keep a show. The second part of that is, I think it's very possible that Cody is doing things that potentially could damage his relationship with Robin. And the reason why is because sometimes when people have certain insecurities, they may luck into a position or they might luck into a relationship or a situation. And they feel like they're undeserving of the opportunity that they have in front of them. And instead of taking full, uh, you know, the full chance or the full 
process of that opportunity, the full benefit of that opportunity, what they do is they intentionally or unintentionally start to subconsciously sabotage themselves. So they start, you know, <laughs> they have the dream job that they don't think they deserve. They start showing up late. They start showing up, turning in projects later than they should. They start to procrastinate. They have a person that they're dating and they don't think that the relationship will work. And this person is somebody they care so deeply about. And if they leave them because they're not enough or they can look at them and say, wow, you're a terrible person or wow, you're just not enough for me then that will be a devastating blow. So instead, what they do is they create these scenarios and these situations. They start arguments. They start fights. And in that way, when the person leaves, like, oh, that person just didn't understand me. They, they were just being unreasonable because they left me because of some dumb fight or some dumb argument. I don't even really believe in that. It's something I don't care about. Because if they leave you, then they left you because you weren't enough. And you weren't as special as you, and you weren't on the same level of specialness that you hold them to. But if you could get them to leave or walk out because you're doing stupid stuff, you're like, oh, you know, it's not me. It's not the fact that I'm not enough. It's just that I was making dumb mistakes. It's that I was causing stupid arguments. <laughs> And that, therefore, there's nothing wrong with me. And I think that th those two things may be present in this whole uh, <laughs> collage of foolishness. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Again, if you're not yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Ring the bell for notifications. I drop material just like this all the time. That's my take. I'm James. This has been my take on reality. And I'm out.